Hi guys, uh, this will be the last video for chapter 11. I'm going to do problem number 31. Uh, it's similar to the to the previous problem, but it's quite a bit more complicated. And because of that, we're going to have to use the feminine equivalent for these capacitors to, to find the, the voltage equation. So what we need to do is to find an equivalent capacitor here. And that equivalent capacitor, of course, is 10 plus 40, which gives us CEQ of 50 microfarads. And again, now remember that because these two are in parallel, they're going to see the exact same voltage. So we can just do the equivalent, and uh, that's 50, sorry, and uh, not have to worry about the individual capacitors. So from here, we, we need to redraw this equation. I'm going to use a different color. Remember that feminine, we do that. Start with A, goes through 80, 20. I know this looks really bad, guys. Sorry. 20 comes down here, goes through 60, goes through 4. Oops, 4 doesn't do that. Goes through 4 and then to B. But it also goes through 30. So for our st first step, we want to find the R theminent. So we'll take this voltage source and short it out. So basically make a short circuit. So it's just a, just a line that it connects it and goes to there, and that's 4. So, to go from A to B, we'll have to go through here with 80 and 20 in parallel. So we can start writing that out. So it's 80 in parallel with 20. And then here, we have a, oh, I call that A prime sometimes when I do this. We have another split. goes from 30 to 60. So that's plus the equivalent of 30 in parallel with 60. And these two both meet here and go through resistor 4. So the equivalent resistor is equal to, uh, our theminent is equal to 40 ohms. Now, the, the more complicated part of this, and I'll have to draw this again, is we need to find V theminent. I'll draw it here. We have A goes through here, goes through. Uh, basically, I'm going to take this and make, uh, we'll make, call that R1 prime. And R1 prime is just 1 over, 1 over 80 plus 1 over 20, which equals... 60 ohms just makes it easier so it goes through a 60 ohm and splits here goes through 60 goes to 30 and you have your source voltage which is 90 volts they meet together and then it goes through 4 When this voltage goes across, it goes along this circuit. It has no reason to go through this 60 or this 40. So basically, we can take those 60 and that 40 and just ignore them completely. So, if you when you do that, well, you can ignore them because if the voltage went through here, it had no place to go when it got to A. So there was no way for the voltage that started here to get back to here. So the voltage would never go through this source. So when we re we can redraw this and simplify this to make it a little easier to understand, we wind up with 90 volts in a circuit that basically looks like this. It's 30. Here's your point A. Goes through 60. And here's your point B. Right? Because basically you're taking your voltage source here and here 
but the voltage isn't going to go through these resistors, so there's no reason to even worry about it. So this is now an easy problem. We know that VAB is basically uh, VA minus VB, uh, sorry about that, minus VB. We know that VB is zero because it's already gone through both resistors, so VB equals zero, zero, not nine. So VA is actually equal to um, 90 times 60 over 90. And that comes from the voltage divider rule. Uh, you take your uh, the voltage you want over the resistor. So we want the voltage across this resistor, 60, because once it, the voltage will go through this 30 volt drop, and then the voltage at A is basically the voltage that goes through the 60 volt, a uh, 60 ohm resistor. So voltage divider rule is you take your source voltage, multiply it by your resistor you want the voltage for divided by the total resistance of the circuit. That leaves us with 60 volts. So that is our V theminent. Now we can go back to this equation here. VC is equal to your V theminent multiplied by E, uh, I'm sorry, 1 minus E to the negative T over RC. Again, RC is your time constant, but it also equals, RC is equal to your, your R theminent, 40 ohms, multiplied by your CEQ here. 50 times 10 to the minus 6. What you're left with is uh, basically 1 over 500. And so what the book does is it, it, it multiplies by the reciprocal, and you're left with, uh, when you plug it in here, you're left with 1 uh, uh, negative t times 500. I guess it just makes the problem easier. And that, that that's to explain some of the times when it does this. Um, so we know that our VC is equal to V theminent 60 times 1 minus E to the negative T 500. Okay, and then the second part of the problem your current IC is equal to E over R times E to the negative T over RC. We already know all of this, so it's easy to plug in. We know that that is 60 over 40 times E to the negative 500 T. And those are your equations. If you wanted to, you could figure out when it would charge, when it would dis uh, how long it take with discharge, things like that. Uh, but hopefully, this helps you out. If you have any questions, please let me know.